Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I have owed you guys two mouse pad reviews. I have the Vancer Ice on my left and I have the Padsmith Temple of Dreams on my right. Both pads offer quite a unique feel and experience. The Padsmith pad being a polyester surface that goes more towards control and the Vancer Ice pad being a fiberglass infused surface that goes a lot more towards speed. The Vancer Ice is 450 by 400, the Padsmith pad is 490 by 420, so you definitely get a little bit more playing room on the Padsmith pad. Both pads take very different directions artistically, the Padsmith pad having a full-blown awesome design. Black and white, love it, I think everything about it looks phenomenal on my desk. And the Vancer Ice pad is a silver tone, and with a light shining on it, it actually is kind of reflective and becomes a little bit more metallic-y and a little bit more silver. I think both pads look great, both pads feel great, but they're definitely for different users and potentially for different games. But I wanna get into what I like, what I don't like, and who I think might best be suited for either one of these pads or both. Let's check it out. The first pad I wanna talk about is the Padsmith Temple of Dreams. I think this pad, aesthetically speaking, again, is one of the nicer looking pads that I personally have in my arsenal. I think the contrast with the whites, the grays, the blacks looks really great. And there is a little oval, shiny, part of the weave that goes across the pad, which adds a, another element of aesthetics on the pad. In terms of the build quality, the stitching is level to the pad. It's four millimeters thick. The base is great. It does not move around on the pad at all. The foam density is, a, is of a harder variant. So it's not something that you're going to be digging into or accidentally pushing your mouse into um, like a Artisan X Soft or Soft. So the pad will remain very consistent and the performance of this pad in Valorant is probably one of my top picks right now for your tack shooters, the crosshair placement and that extra control, that lower speed that you get for very slow crosshair placement, holding an angle type moments in Valorant is extremely good. And I'll throw up clips on my left. You guys can see a little bit of the Valorant gameplay I had on the pad, but everything feels great in regards to that level of speed that you're getting. And when you transition over to needing to do a flick, the dynamic friction is a little bit lower than the static and it feels very open. So it's very easy to do a 180, very easy to do a flick to somebody and then have that nice controlled crosshair or that nice controlled spray. One of my top pads for tack shooters for sure. How that translates over to Apex, and again, I'll have clips on my left that you guys can see. But again, for those fast movements that you are typically doing in Apex, it feels very open and it still feels nice. More balanced, I would say. When you need that, let's say, long range crosshair placement and you are trying to kind of keep your crosshair on somebody long distance, you get that nice level of control with those slow movements. And when you need to kind of open it up again, when somebody is bouncing around and you need those fast horizontal movements, it actually doesn't feel quite as slow and a very nice, maybe a few hairs lower than balanced in speed feel for those uh, movements. But again, no mud and no tug, so the pad doesn't feel like it's controlling you. You get used to the speed of this thing and it becomes very natural. It's a nice controlled feeling, but nothing that feels like it's controlling you. So that's why it's one of my top pads right now for pack shooters like Valorant and CSGO. Comparing the Padsmith pad to the GSRC Rouge, they are actually somewhat similar in speed. I feel though that the Padsmith pad feels a little bit more open on static movements. Whereas at times on the GSRC Rouge, when you start getting very slow, sometimes it almost feels as though you are moving through mud or almost like your mouse is magnetized to the surface. I don't really get that feeling on the Padsmith pad, so I do prefer the Padsmith pad over the Rouge, but they do feel pretty similar in speed on dynamic. And just as you are generally moving around the pad, they do feel quite a bit similar. I do, again, think that the main difference is on those static movements or very slow movements when you are kind of rotating or going side to side. And comparing the Padsmith pad to another one of my favorites, the Lethal Gaming Gear Saturn, I do feel that the Padsmith pad offers a little bit reduction in speed, both on dynamic as well as static over the Lethal Gaming Gear Saturn. The Saturn, to me, has always felt more like a balance pad that maybe leans a little bit towards control, whereas the Padsmith pad definitely takes a few hairs back from full balance and kind of leans a bit more towards control. But again, both of them feel very open, the Saturn feeling a little bit more so with those staticky movements. Um, you do definitely feel that reduction in speed transitioning from one to the other. So keep in mind that the Padsmith pad, very consistent control pad, 
very fun, very good, but will be a little bit slower in feel on all those movements compared to the Lethal Gaming Gear Saturn. Transitioning to the Vancer Ice Pad, this is definitely a pad made for you speed demons. This to me even is a little bit faster than the Skypad 3.0, but of course it feels a little bit better. It's a little bit more comfortable because it's not a hard surface. The pad is infused with fiberglass, so it's kind of cool how you can see these little specks shining and reflecting light. I think the pad surface looks great, and again, it's unique in feel and appearance. In feel, it does kind of feel a little bit textured, and it kind of throws you off a little bit because that texture on your skin, it's almost like the pad is gonna be a little bit slower than it is, and then you kind of move your mouse around and it's like, whoa, that's fast. The stitched edges are very flush to the pad. I think they did a nice job with those, and the foam is four millimeters thick and it's very hard, so you are not going to have inconsistency in the glide and inconsistency in the speed. It's going to maintain that very, very fast nature of that glide. Now, I don't think that this would be for you guys looking for that controlled crosshair placement in tack shooters. It is probably something more along the lines of your Apex pad if you're, again, a speed demon. I have similar issues on this pad that I have on the Hayate Atsu, and that is when I get to my end range of motion, I do wiggle the mouse a little bit, so I do lose a little bit of micro control when I'm trying to fast track somebody very quickly left, right, left, right, as they are jumping around the screen. I over aim a little bit, so I do probably prefer something along the lines of the Padsmith Temple of Dreams, but that's not to say that this isn't a very fun pad for me to swap to. I do enjoy it. I just don't think that for my own personal gameplay, whether it be the way that I'm holding or gripping my mouse, the way that I am moving, it's just not something like the Atsu, which I also enjoy. It's just not something that I notice I'm playing my best on and things, little things that kind of affect my gameplay in a negative way that would keep me from maining the pad. Speaking of the Hayate Atsu, doing a side-by-side -side comparison, you can really get a sense of just how much faster the Vancer Ice is on dynamic movements and how much faster the Vancer Ice is on static movements as well as the initial friction of the pad. It is something, again, that is very fast. So if you are having those wiggle type issues on the Hayate Atsu, you will definitely be having them on the Vancer Ice. Comparing the Vancer Ice to the Skypad, I personally believe that the Vancer Ice has lower initial friction than the Skypad 3.0. Dynamic friction to me feels faster than the Skypad 3.0. And in terms of those static, small circular movements, or just small staticky crosshair placement movements. I do think that the Vancer Ice is a little bit faster uh, for those movements as well. So if you are, again, a speed demon, you're looking for something that might feel to you a little bit faster than the experience on a Skypad 3.0, this pad could definitely be good for you, especially if you don't want glass eating your mouse gates. So guys, again, two pretty awesome new pads that hit the market. Both are unique in their own right. Again, Vancer if you want to be a speed demon, and if you want a little bit of control, the Padsmith pad is fantastic. Both of them feel really good. It really just boils down to what do you need, what do you notice in your gameplay is happening as you are doing certain movements. Again, you know how I feel about the movements on the Atsu and the Vancer with very fast tracking. So you have to kind of analyze your play and they might honestly be two very awesome pads to cop to see how you play on a very speedy pad and a control pad that is very consistent and just looks pretty damn cool. So guys, I hope that helped. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.